When I got the Corvus Belly Kickstarter, there was one particular miniature that wasn't particularly miniature. Its name was a pretty big clue, the Megalodron. I had decided to make this the last model in the core box that I would paint and having completed all the core box minis, getting a new Eclipse airbrush and feeling confident in the growth of my painting skills, it seemed the stars were aligning and the great painting shall begin. If you didn't know already, my combined army has an ivory bone armor color scheme with varying skin tones depending on what race of alien the miniature is. As much of the Megalodron sculpt is very similar to that of the combined drones, albeit on a much larger scale, I used my drone paint scheme as a basis for what I was aiming for in this big old bad boy. As previously stated, I also wanted to use this rather sizable fella as an excuse to practice and learn a little more about airbrushing with inks. You can check out my failures in the past with the video link you can see in the top right of your screen now. Just remember to come back and check out the rest of this one if you do. The model itself comes in two pieces and rather annoyingly the legs are stuck firmly to the jungle base. This is going to make painting all the foliage and that rectag a pain to paint. Okay, enough chatting, time to get to the painting table. I began by priming the model black, as I was going to be using inks and to practice my airbrush control, rather than a general zenithal spray, I tried to focus areas of light using white ink. The aim here was to prepare the model for intense color from the inks that I spray over the primed model. The areas of white should give the highest intensity of color and leading to the black makes some natural blends quickly and easily. As I put down some color over the model, I was feeling pretty good with the results, using a purple for the shadow and red for the highlight to try and get the skin tone I was aiming for, the purple came out lighter than the red, so the balance felt a little bit off, but for the time being, nothing terrible. The challenge I was struggling with was how was I going to get the ivory look to the model's armor to try and get it looking similar to the rest of my army. I had a burnt umber ink that I thought might be able to help me get there. But this is when things started to go a little bit wrong for me. Putting it down, it created an interesting effect, but reduced the intensity of a lot of the colors I had previously painted and acted like a dirty, oily filter. Really great for perhaps painting an old greasy tank, but not for my centerpiece model for the Shazvasti forces. Putting that aside for the time being, I then decided to have a go at putting some paint onto the foliage of the base. To try and give the plants some depth, I began with dark blue for the shadows and recesses. Once this was down, I targeted the majority of the surface with an intense green. As the inks dried, it lost some of its saturation, so a sweep over with a final highlight of yellow and it was popping again. This left the tag, which looked to be of a pan-o design, so I went with a light blue that came out pretty damn bright. Why, hello there. Hey, not up there, down here. That's better. I'm the shameless self promo card. Did you know that I have a Patreon? And if you like the content I make and want to support me, Patreon's the best way that you can help me. Joining also gets you exclusive work in progress and behind the scenes videos and information. I'll also release videos early on my Patreon so you can get there before anyone else on YouTube. Audio recordings of my short stories so you can enjoy them anywhere you are. And full length painting videos so you can find that little bit that you want to learn how to paint that I did probably quite well. Here are the fantastic people supporting me right now and so why don't you add your name to that list. Anyway, I've got to get back to the race so see you later everybody. <laughs> I just had the top half of the miniature to do now and wanted to bring a bit of brightness as it was looking pretty dull. For the great big shoulder chest spikes and the blade on the cannon, I decided to give these a big Necron-like green glow. So spraying them with the light green, they popped quite nicely. With the airbrushing done, 
I was honestly feeling a little disheartened. The overall paint scheme so far left the model looking very dark, and the tag on the base was drawing attention more than the model itself. It was time to put the airbrush away and get stuck in with some good old regular brushwork. The first and probably biggest job was to fix this awful dingy brown armour. So using the same three paints I have been using for all of my combined army's armour, I got to work first placing the darkest brown and then building up to the ivory highlight. There was a lot to do and it took a while. Something about the material also made this process harder than I was expecting as the paint had trouble adhering to the surface as easily as with other regular minis. It had been properly primed so it could have been an effect of the inks on the surface or the fact that I was just working with larger surface areas but it wasn't fun when I found I had accidentally removed layers I had been building and had to retouch up those areas multiple times. This whole process took what seemed like forever, but I eventually got the model done. Well, almost done, as I decided not to paint the undercarriage and leave it very dark. This helped give the outer surface of the armor more contrast, just don't look too closely as it does smack of, well, laziness. I was now feeling happier about where the model was heading with the greater level of contrasts, but there was still more to be done. First, the flesh tone needed a further highlight, so around the head I added a pink. It was around this time that I needed a distraction from this model, and luckily I was asked how to paint some OSL on my Twitch stream. So I took a break to give an example using a Malifaux base. I was actually pretty pleased with the demonstration and surprised myself that it actually worked. The green shoulder horn thingies also needed edge highlighting, so Mixing some ice yellow with the green, I went about using the edge of my brush to add the highlight to the edges of the model. The model was now almost complete, except for some touch-ups. Oh, and the hand cannon, of course. To get his great big artillery piece painted, I gave it a matte black coating and then went back and forth with various shades of grey to wet blend slash layer the reflective shine down the barrel. I also added some purple and blue to the recesses of the gun to give it some colour and it was pretty much finished. Now, looking at the model I realised that the tag on the base was still too bright and drawing way too much attention, so I had to go about toning it down and giving it a bit more detail. First thing to do was panel line and darken many of the recesses with some black. I also tried to add some scratches by sketching lines with grey and black, however my detail brush is getting pretty old and cannot hold a point so well anymore, so I pulled out a synthetic brush I had that I don't honestly like using but for this it did the trick. Now the tag was looking a little bright but it didn't blend with the scene around it. Now was time to add some simple weathering and to do this I slapped on some brown and worked up to a red orange as if to show it had gotten mudded after its fall. It was a pretty simple paint job but it did the trick to blend the model into the jungle fauna and reduce its visual impact from drawing the eye away from the model. I had some small touch ups to do and could quite honestly spend at least another 5 or so hours improving blends, adding small details and so on. But with lots of more interesting models waiting for me to be painted, I called it a day and the Megalodron was finished. Okay, time for the beauty shots with some epic music in 3, 2, 1... Thanks so much for watching, let me know what you thought in the comments below and if you really want to help support this video and the channel, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have already done so, then just know that you are legendary. And if you haven't, then your legendary status is pending. See you in the next video!